Hello again. We are now on lesson 1.3, part B. So we're still in section 1.3, but there's just a little side topic here. And it's a certain kind of an equation called an absolute value equation. So you can identify an absolute value equation because it has an absolute value expression in it. That's a way to tell. Your goal is still the same. You want to figure out what the value of the variable is to make the equation true. But in an absolute value equation, you can have more than one answer. I know that sounds crazy to think, but remember we already saw a special case infinitely many. So now we're just talking two. Not so bad. So think about it this way to get the idea. Here's a few basics. These are all absolute value equations because they have an expression that's inside the absolute value symbols. So basically what I'm asking you for this first one is, I'm asking you what values of x equal 5? So the, I know that the absolute value of 5 is 5, right? So x can be 5. But isn't the absolute value of a negative 5 also 5? So in this case, x can also be negative 5. Both of those values make this equation true. So I bet you can do this next one all by yourself. You can try it. You can hit pause anytime. Isn't it nice to be able to pause me whenever you want? Don't you wish you could do that in class? So I have the absolute value of n equals 3. Well, the absolute value of 3 is 3, but the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So again, two answers. And the last one, just to mess you up, the absolute value of y equals p. Okay, so y can equal p, right? Because the absolute value of p is p. But isn't the absolute value of negative p also p? So y can also be negative p. I know, it's a mouthful. We got it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you some equations that are a little bit more complicated than that. I just wanted you to understand why you can have two solutions for this. And it's because with absolute value, there are two numbers that are the same distance away from zero. So steps for solving multi-step absolute value equations. Those other ones didn't really have anything going on. It was just the absolute value symbol with one letter inside. You're going to see as you look at the side of your paper that there are more than that. So step number one, it's your job to isolate the absolute value expression on one side of the equation which means you want the absolute value symbol and what's inside by itself. You won't want anything outside of the absolute value symbol to be on side with it. Then we're going to rewrite our equation as two cases, two possible answers, meaning for this one, x can equal 5, x can equal negative 5. And you'll see when we get there, it will make sense. Then you're going to end up solving both of the cases and check to make sure that your answers are right. So we can still double check our work with these. So let's try a few so we can make those notes meaningful. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so here I have the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 4. I'm going to go ahead and change my signs because I'm used to it. Now step 1 says to isolate the absolute value expression on one side. Do you see how this is not inside with that? This means I want that to be by itself. So I'll get rid of this negative 3 the same way I would in a regular one step. I'm going to add 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is gone, and I'm left with the absolute value of x equals 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now right here, we don't really need to set up two cases. Because when you do, well, I guess when you do set up the two cases, it's your answer. x can be equal to 7. x can also be equal to negative 7. So the absolute value can be a positive 7 because the absolute value of 7 is 7. And it can also be a negative 7 because the absolute value of negative 7 is also 7. Keep going. If it's not making sense yet, I bet you by the end of all these examples it will totally make sense. Okay, I'm going to draw my line. Remember that step 1 says that I want the absolute value symbol and what's inside to be by itself. This 4 is not inside. This 4 needs to go away. Now you can look at the absolute value symbols just like you would parentheses. This does mean I want to multiply 4 by that. So if I want to get rid of a number that's being multiplied by something, don't you divide by it? Yes, you do. 
So I am going to divide this whole expression by 4. Because when I do that, and because I can do that because this is multiplication here. I'm multiplying two terms. I'm not adding the 4 plus this x plus 2. I'm multiplying them. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And that means I'm left with the absolute value of x plus 2. Whatever you do to this side, you have to do to this side. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Okay. At this point, you cannot just add a negative 2 to each side. This negative 2 is inside the absolute value symbols, and this is where you have to come up with the two cases that I was talking about in step number 2. So x plus 2 can equal positive 6, right? The absolute value of x plus 2 can equal positive 6. Can't the value of x plus 2 also equal negative 6, though? Because the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. So case number 1 says that x plus 2 equals 6. Case number 2 says that x plus 2 equals negative 6. So when you set up your two cases, at that point you can remove the symbols and you're saying this can equal the positive version or this can equal the negative version because the absolute value of a positive 6 is 6 and the absolute value of a negative 6 is 6. So now solve both of these. I would add a negative 2, and x can be equal to 4. I can add a negative 2, and x can be equal to negative 8. So x can be 4, or x can be negative 8. And think about this. 4 plus 2 is 6, and the absolute value of 6 is 6. If I plug negative 8 in, Negative 8 plus 2 is a negative 6, and isn't the absolute value of negative 6, 6? Yes. That's why there are two possible answers. Okay, let's try another one. So with this one, we'll draw our line. I'm going to add the opposite in here. Now, do you notice that it's just the absolute value symbol? There's nothing else going on here. This means that I can move rate 2, rewriting this as my two cases. You can't just add 2.5 here. In order to get rid of these absolute value symbols, I need to write the two cases. So case number one, I'm going to write over here. x plus negative 2.5, what's inside here, could equal a positive 8. x plus negative 2.5 can also equal a negative 8. So what's in here? can be equal to 8 because the absolute value of 8 is 8. And what's in here can also equal negative 8 because the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. Now you'll solve both of these. I'm going to add 2.5. So my first x, 8 plus 2.5 is 10.5. And in this one, when I add my 2.5, a negative 8 plus a positive 2.5 means I have to subtract. So 8 minus 2 is 6. Subtract another 5 tenths, and you're left with negative 5.5. If you take 10.5 plus negative 2.5, you get 8, and the absolute value of 8 is 8. If you plugged negative 5.5 in here, negative 5.5 plus negative 2.5 is negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So it'll work. Promise. Let's try another one. I know, these are a little bit tougher. So again, we see, hey, the absolute value symbol is already isolated. There's nothing to get rid of first, so I'm going to make this into two cases. So 2p plus 5 can equal positive 11. What's in here can be a positive 11, because the absolute value of 11 is 11. But 2p plus 5 can also be equal to negative 11, because the absolute value of negative 11 is also 11. So now we'll solve both of these. I'm going to add a negative 5, and I get 2p equals 6. I will divide by 2. Sorry, I'm going to write over here. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so p can be 3. If I solve the second equation, I do start out by adding negative 5 again. Negative 11 plus negative 5 is negative 16. We divide by 2. And in this one, p would equal negative 8. Now when you go to plug this in, if p is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11, and the absolute value of 11 is 11. If p were negative 8, 2 times negative 8 would be negative 16. 
negative 16 plus 5 would equal negative 11, and the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. Let's try another one. Okay, when we look at this one, do you see how the 4 is not inside with the D? That means it needs to go away before I write my two cases. So to get rid of multiplying by 4, because this means the same thing as a 4 next to parentheses, I will divide by 4, and the absolute value of D is equal to 20 divided by 4, which is 5. And this is one of those nice ones. The value of D can be 5. D could also be negative 5, because both 5 and negative 5 have an absolute value of 5. Okay, last one on this page, and then yes, I have more special cases for you. I told you, in algebra there's always a ton. Okay, I'm going to add the opposite like normal. And I'm going to treat this kind of like a two-step equation right now. I see that this x is the only thing that's in the absolute value symbols. That means I want it by itself. So to start off, I'm going to get rid of this extra constant number that's there. I'm not going to get rid of the 3 first. I'm going to do just what I would do with a two-step. And we're required to get rid of the constant before the variable term, or before the coefficient of the variable term. So negative 1 plus a positive 1 is gone. I'm left with 3 times the absolute value of x and 20 plus 1 is 21. I'm still not ready for my two cases because the absolute value is not isolated. I need to get rid of this 3. Now we can go ahead and divide by that. So the absolute value of x equals 21 divided by 3, which is 7. So at this point, x can be 7 or x can be negative 7 because the absolute value of 7 is 7 and the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. I'm sure you're tired of me saying that. But I really think it helps it to make sense, so I will continue to repeat myself. Okay, special cases. Flip your page. And here's when, yes, it's a little bit strange, and these things only happen once in a while, but I need to make sure that you are aware. So first off, not every single absolute value equation has two solutions. So I know the ones you've seen so far, they have. But if the absolute value expression, once you get it all on one side by its lonesome, equals zero, then it means there's only one solution. And I'll show you why when you try to set up two cases. So first example here, I'm going to show you when there's one solution. So your step one, still the same, because again, you're not going to be able to just look at it and know right off the bat. I want to isolate this absolute value of x plus 3. That means I need this plus 4 to go away, so I'm going to add a negative 4. So the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 4 plus negative 4 is 0. Now this is the point where you would go ahead and do step number 2, rewrite the equation as two cases. And in the past, you'd say x plus 3 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals negative 0. But you know there is no such thing as negative 0. So in this case, there's only one case, x plus 3 equals 0, because I can't have a negative 0. So I'll go ahead and solve it and add my negative 3 to each side. And x would equal negative 3. And if you plug a negative 3 back in, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And 0 plus 4 is 4. So if you did try to plug a positive 3 in there, 3 plus 3 would be 6. And 6 plus 4 wouldn't equal 4. So only one solution will make that true. You can identify that there's only one solution when you have isolated the absolute value expression and it's equal to zero because you can't have a positive and a negative version of zero. It's just itself. Okay, there's also a situation where, let me zoom out, sorry if it's making you dizzy, the absolute value expression is equal to a negative value. When that happens, it means that there are actually no solutions. So this is kind of like those double-sided ones we did before where one side doesn't equal the other. And you'll see why in just a moment. So we just talked about the special case where there's only one answer. Now we're going to talk about when there's not an answer, when no number will make it true. Same thing, your step one, get this absolute value of x plus 2 by itself. So I would add a negative 8 because that's not inside. And 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. And negative 3 equals the absolute value of x plus 2. Now, what value, what absolute value could ever give me a negative result? Think about that. Is it possible to have a negative distance away from something? 
It's not. An absolute value cannot equal a negative. So if when you get your absolute value isolated and it's set equal to a negative number, all you have to say is no solutions. And some of you might be thinking right now, because I've been doing this a while, but on the front we set them up equal to negatives. If you look back at the front, the absolute value was equal to 7. The absolute value was equal to a positive 6. The absolute value was equal to a positive 8. Absolute value was equal to a positive 11. In every single one of the examples on the front, at the point where you had the absolute value symbol isolated, it was set equal to a positive number. When you rewrite it as your two cases, the absolute value symbol is gone, so that rule doesn't apply at that point. So again, you can recognize that there are no solutions when once you get the absolute value symbol isolated, you see that it is set equal to a negative because that is impossible. There's no value I can plug in for x plus 2 that will give me a negative 3, no matter what I do. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.